My name is Tracy Tagahama Espinosa, and I uh, teach a course at Harvard University called The Neuroscience of Learning An Introduction to Mind, Brain, Health, and Education. Meaning making in the grand description that I would give it, which is understanding how other people are thinking, how other people are feeling, and then understanding why their contextual understanding would make them do that or think that or feel that is very, very important as, in far, as far as education is concerned, especially in being effective in education because those variables change a lot. And a lot of the times teachers are just taught how to design a curriculum and then maybe some pedagogical tools. But if you don't understand the concept of meaning making, of why it's necessary to understand the thinking and the feeling and the context behind it, it's impossible to really have long-term learning. And so I do think it's very, very important. Part of the way we do this, um, for example, in our course, is that we do take the time to ask the students, you know, why are you here? The part, um, maybe uh, the first discussion board we have is to ask them, you know, what are your goals for this class? Why are you here? What do you think this is going to do for you? How will this help you? It helps us get inside their heads a little bit to understand what are their objectives in actually taking on the information that we do because it's uh, reported to be one of the hardest classes you can take but people always say it was worth it. So we want to know why they're willing to spend so much time doing the, the work for the class and a lot of the times it's because they have long-term effects. It actually is much more beneficial. Um, if you're only there to get an A for, and get a degree, don't take my class. But if you're there because you want to learn for your life, I still have people who write me probably once a week I get an email from an old student several years ago who says, you know, do you remember when you said this? This really changed my life. And I think that's what I'm after. I'm after having a long-term impact on people's learning. I think all learning is based on relationships. Um, you can learn content from a computer. You can watch a video and you can get content knowledge. To learn how to use the skill, you actually have to have somebody guiding you. And to change your attitudes, you really need to have another human being. So if all learning is based on knowledge, skills, and attitudes, if you only want the superficial level, you can use your telephone. But if you really want to have skills and attitudinal changes, if you want to have a functioning society, you have to have this dynamic of um, work, humans working together. So the relationships are really fundamental to that. And meaning making, in essence, is you caring about what the other person is thinking about or feeling about. And in that way, you're able to then be more empathetic in your teaching. You're able to adjust your teaching so that it's actually meeting them at their needs. So. I have a, a book that has over 70 neuromyths, but I have been told many times, and it was brought up here in the conference, one of the probably the worst neuromyths that exists are that um, men and women are, have different ways of thinking, and they're good for different types of professions, or they should do different types of things because their brains are set up like that. And we spent a lot of time talking today, um, understanding that there's a lot of expectations placed on women and men of what types of professions they should do and the big question came up is why more women don't go into computer science or to STEM activities, uh, physics classes and um, a lot of it comes down to social expectations, being told that they're not able to do that and they believe that their brains are not capable but that's not true. Your brain is absolutely capable. What's different is the way that we treat or we, the expectations that we have um, for people there. So I would say that um, the gender myth is one of the biggest ones that holds back people from reaching their potential. Other myths have to do with things like uh, the most common neuromyth um, that exists is about learning styles. That you have to either learn you know kinesthetically or uh, auditorially or visually that's a total myth. Your brain is desperate to receive information from all the senses, but we don't often teach through all the senses. We, we just talk at people. And so part of the idea here is we could change a lot of that if we were more aware of those types of myths and not categorize people into different ways. That myth does a lot of harm because people think, well, my learning style is visual and the teacher was auditory. That's why I failed in the class. That couldn't be farther from the truth. So if we can get rid of the myths, then we're able to use the good information, the, the few things that we really know about the brain, to improve teaching. I would say that in my own life experience, I think uh, the best thing that ever motivated me was uh, I was never told I couldn't 
do something. Um, and I know this is, you know, I grew up in Berkeley, California in the 60s, and the idea was if they evaluate me, it's to help me. And so I was never told you're bad at this or that or the other thing. I was told next time try to do this. And it opens up your world when you're not judged, when you're just told that you can do things. And I think that that kind of formative experience is very important, but you can do that with older people as well. So um, not putting limits on people, I think, is a great way to start. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving the conference because I see such a mixture of people. I know that there's a lot of um, university professors, but a lot of people coming from very different angles. There's uh, design people, or there's engineers, or there's people um, who are actually teaching history or other things. So you've got a big mix of people here. And I think that there's a genuine uh, interest, which I really love, to improve university education. And this is one of the first times I've actually seen that. When you go to kindergarten and you work with preschool, Everybody is very up to date and they're changing all the time. And the slowest, the, the slowest by far are university. It's inverse to the age group as far as acceptability. But here you have hundreds of people very open and so there's a nice energy here of people wanting to look for the best way to, to teach and learn within a university context. So I really love it.